Have you ever wondered why it might be better for the Philippines to choose China over the United States? To understand this complex issue, let's delve into the historical ties binding these three nations. First, let's take a step back in time to the period of the American colonization of the Philippines, which began in the late 19th century and extended into the first half of the 20th century. This era was marked by a significant cultural and political influence from the United States, which left an indelible imprint on the Philippine society, economy, and governance. However, this relationship was not always harmonious, and the Philippines often found itself caught in the complex web of American foreign policy. On the other hand, the relationship between China and the Philippines predates the American colonization by centuries. Chinese merchants have been trading with the Philippines since the pre-colonial era, forming deep cultural and economic ties. Over the centuries, these relations have evolved with periods of tension and harmony, but the enduring nature of the ties is a testament to their resilience. These contrasting historical experiences have shaped the relationships between the Philippines, the United States, and China in profound ways. The colonial legacy of the United States has left a complicated and sometimes contentious relationship, while the enduring trade relations with China have formed a foundation of mutual economic interest. However, history is not a static entity, and the past is not always a reliable predictor of the future. The world is in a constant state of flux, and international relations are no exception. The historical ties between these three nations offer a context, a backdrop, against which we can understand the current dynamics and future possibilities. This historical backdrop sets the stage for the current dynamics between these three nations. But the stage is not set in stone, and the actors are not bound by the script. As we delve deeper into this topic, we will explore how these historical ties are being reinterpreted, reshaped, and redefined in the present day. This is the fascinating and complex world of international relations, where history and the present intersect, collide, and sometimes even converge. In times of crisis, who do you think has been there for the Philippines? Let's turn the clock back, shall we? Let's start with the Typhoon Haiyan disaster in 2013. A typhoon, which has been predicted to be the strongest tropical cyclone ever recorded, has made landfall in the Philippines. The U.S. Navy's Typhoon Warning Center had been predicting sustained winds of 195 miles an hour. A tragedy that left the nation heartbroken, with thousands of lives lost and millions displaced. In these desperate hours, China was quick to lend a helping hand, providing immediate humanitarian aid to the devastated areas. This included food, water and essential medical supplies, demonstrating a neighborly concern and readiness to assist. And then let's recall the Marawi siege in 2017. The Philippines was grappling with the nightmare of an armed conflict. Again, China stepped in, providing weaponry and intelligence support to help the Philippine forces quell the insurgency. This assistance was not just timely, but also instrumental in the successful resolution of the conflict. Now, let's contrast these instances with the response of the United States, a longtime ally of the Philippines. Remember the Bohol earthquake in 2013? The United States pledged aid, but the assistance was delayed. The local communities in desperate need of help had to wait. And then there was the Davao city bombing in 2016. The United States offered condolences, but the tangible support that was needed in the aftermath was missing. It's not about fostering resentment or pointing fingers. It's about recognizing who has been there when it mattered the most, who has shown up not just with words, but with actions who has demonstrated a commitment to stand by the Philippines, not just in times of peace and prosperity, but also in times of adversity and despair. In the grand scheme of things, the actions of nations speak louder than their words. The aid provided by China in the times of need paints a vivid picture of a friend who is ready to step in when the going gets tough. So, who was there when it mattered most? A question worth pondering, isn't it? Before we dive deeper, a quick reminder, hit subscribe, stay intrigued. Now back to our story. Ever wondered why Ferdinand Marcos Sr. and Rodrigo Duterte seem to have a disdain for the United States? Let's delve into this intriguing topic. 
Ferdinand Marcos Sr., the 10th President of the Philippines, had a complex relationship with the United States. Despite being an ally during his early years in power, his sentiments shifted dramatically during the latter part of his regime. One of the reasons for this was his growing disillusionment with the U.S.S. influence over Philippine internal affairs. He believed that this was undermining the country's sovereignty. Marcos began to pivot towards China, a nation that offered economic ties without the perceived political interference. Fast forward to Rodrigo Duterte, the 16th president. His administration marked another turning point in the Philippines' relationship with the United States. Known for his fiery rhetoric, Duterte has been vocal about his issues with the U.S., criticizing their policies and actions that he believed were detrimental to his country. He echoed Marcos's sentiments about the U.S., S. meddling in Philippine affairs and expressed admiration for China's non-interference approach. Duterte's actions also reflect his inclination towards China. He has sought to forge closer ties with Beijing, believing it to be a more reliable partner in terms of economic growth and regional security. In his public statements, he has often praised China's assistance in various sectors, including infrastructure development and disaster relief, contrasting it with the perceived delay or lack of aid from the U.S. In summary, both Marcos and Duterte have their reasons for favoring China over the United States, rooted in their respective political perspectives. They share a common belief that the U.S.'s influence in their country is excessive and detrimental, while China offers a more respectful and mutually beneficial partnership. Indeed, the leaders' perspectives can significantly sway a nation's alliances. It's fascinating how the views of these two leaders have shaped the Philippines' diplomatic relations. As we move forward, it's essential to keep in mind that the dynamics of international relations are complex and ever-changing. So keep questioning, keep learning, and remember, history often has a way of repeating itself. So, where does this leave the Philippines now, in the grand scheme of things? Let's start by looking at the political landscape. Aligning with China has reshaped the Philippines' global positioning. For decades, the country was seen as a staunch ally of the United States. But this shift towards China has allowed the Philippines to exercise a more independent foreign policy. It's not about choosing sides, but rather about striking a balance that serves the best interests of the nation. Now let's pivot to the economic implications. China has emerged as a significant source of investment for the Philippines. Infrastructure projects, job creation and trade opportunities have all seen a boost. The economic ties between the two countries have grown stronger, providing the Philippines with a more diversified economy. On the social front, there's a mixed response. Some fear the influence of China, while others appreciate the economic benefits. There's a clear divide, and it's a conversation that continues to evolve. But what about the future? Well, the Philippines stands at a crossroads. In one direction, there's the potential for even stronger ties with China. This path could lead to increased economic prosperity, but it also comes with the risk of over-dependency. On the other hand, the Philippines could choose to recalibrate its relationships, maintaining a balance between the United States and China. This path could lead to a more robust and resilient nation, capable of navigating the complexities of international politics. It's also worth considering the role of the next generation. Young Filipinos will inherit these decisions, and their voices will be instrumental in determining the country's direction. Will they continue down the path laid by their leaders, or will they carve out a new one? The choice isn't simple, but it's crucial for the Philippines' future. It's a decision that requires careful thought, open dialogue, and a clear vision for the kind of nation the Philippines wants to be. It's a decision that will shape the country's destiny in the global arena. So as we continue to ponder, remember that it's not just about choosing between two superpowers, but about choosing the best path for the Philippines. Let's take a moment to reflect on what we've uncovered today. We've journeyed through the intricate tapestry of the Philippines' historical ties with two powerful nations, China and the United States. 
These ties, as we've seen, are not just diplomatic formalities. They've shaped the country's past and continue to influence its present and future. We delved into the times of need, when the Philippines found itself at the mercy of natural disasters or political turmoil. It was during these critical junctures that the true nature of its alliances was revealed. While aid from the United States was often delayed, China swiftly rose to the occasion, offering immediate assistance and standing shoulder to shoulder with the Filipino people. Then we explored the perspectives of two of the Philippines' most influential leaders, Ferdinand Marcos Sr. and Rodrigo Duterte. Both leaders, despite their different political ideologies, shared a common distrust towards the United States. Their sentiments, echoed by many Filipinos, have played a major role in tilting the country's alliances towards the East. We also examined the current dynamics between the Philippines, China, and the United States. The Philippines' strategic location in the Pacific and its rich resources have made it a coveted ally for these superpowers. Yet the country's leaders have often chosen to lean towards China, a decision influenced by both historical ties and pragmatic considerations. In essence, the Philippines' relationships with China and the United States are far from black and white. They are a complex web of historical ties, immediate needs, and strategic interests. Whether it's the timely aid from China or the leaders' perspectives favoring the East, it's evident that the Philippines' relationship with these superpowers is intricate and multifaceted. So as we leave you with these reflections, remember the world is not just what it seems on the surface. There are layers of history and politics that shape the course of nations. So keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep seeking the truth. Subscribe for more amazing content and keep wondering. Don't miss out on future explorations and discoveries. Hit subscribe and ring the bell to stay updated with our new content. Your journey of wonder continues with every video. Stay connected and engaged on social media. Continue the conversation, follow us. Thank you for being a part of the Have You Ever Wondered community. Keep wondering, keep discovering. Until next time.